this one thing is very important when it pertains to your eBay business, and I'm going to talk to you about it on the other side. So without any further ado, let's go. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the channel. This is John from Flippin' Ain't Easy. And, and Jenna. And Jenna. She's in the background. She's uh, whining and complaining this morning because she's not able to find the size bag that we're looking for she needs a, a 36 inch by 24 inch poly bag and she can't find it were you able to find it nope nope so she's going to do a little uh franken bagging this morning so this is what we're talking about we've got this big box now you might ask why are we doing this because we're trying to provide extra protection we don't have a thousand boxes sitting around of various sizes that we would allow us to boxes, do double but we don't have a thousand no right so look and i doubt you do as well uh you may not have a thousand boxes that is going to allow you to double box this thing so this is one of those foot massage machines i don't know if we can take a I've look it. it's like a little foot massage foot massager right and it has internal packaging now our general rule of thumb when it comes to this is we'll just slap a label on the box and be done with it uh, if um, there's internal, really good internal packaging. But a lot of these open box return items, they don't have good internal packaging. Like you're talking, um, maybe there's some cardboard in there, but not any uh, styrofoam. If there's styrofoam, we're not doing all this. But we want to make sure that it arrives in great condition. So she can't find the 36 by 24 bags. So as a result, um, we're using a couple 24 yeah you just cut the one side and you make it fit now this is just something we've always done we're talking it's going to cost us 15 cents a bag approximately to do this and we're talking an extra 30 cents plus the cost of the bubble wrap and we have a better sense that this is going to arrive without damage and i gotta tell you guys we don't get a lot of complaints about items arriving broken or damaged this may seem like a little extra work. You can ask Jenna about that. It is. But at the end of the day, would you rather take the extra time to make sure your item is a um, little bit more securely packed than just throwing a label on a box? Or do you want to deal with that buyer who's now PO'd that they can't get their foot massaged because the thing arrived broken or cracked? That kind of thing. So that's what we do. That's how we do it. Just an idea for you guys. We carry a lot of different size poly bags. You can get these poly bags on Amazon for like 50 for like less than 20 bucks. So it's, to me, it's well worth the expense. So that is how we Franken bag our packages, right? And it may not be the, the prettiest thing, but to me, UPS accepts the package. Um, the, the buyer gets it in good condition. I don't get any crap about how I package these. Maybe it's not pretty to you. Maybe you'd rather stack up a ton of different size boxes. And you know what? We all do things differently. This is just how we do it here. And I like sharing that kind of thing with you guys. And, and by the way, we're consistent with this. And, and this is how we consistently ship out our items. So if you bought from us before, you know this is how we do it. Unless we have to actually happen to have the right box on hand. And then we'll make that work, double boxing it, that type of thing. But... The, the, the topic at hand is consistency, guys, no matter what you do. But it starts with your routine and having a plan. So if you are just the type of seller that is going to, uh, I'm going to watch a movie late at night and maybe play some video games late at night and wake up whenever I want to and get up and maybe I'll see how many listings I can get done. Well, if you're full time, that is the wrong strategy, guys. I mean, part-time, I get it. We had Art from Art of Resell on uh, last night on the live stream. He's part-time, and he maximizes his time. And there's certain days he can list, and there's certain days that he's not able to list. Uh, my argument is, is that if he was to take the two days that he had available to list and maybe schedule those listings so that the listings are listed throughout the week, it's going to show eBay that consistency. See, eBay is like your extended family, okay? It, it loves you. you. It loves you. eBay loves you. 
And whether you believe it or not, sometimes I think we, it's like that uncle that really nobody gets along with, but really you love that uncle. He just gets on your nerves. That's what eBay is. That's that uncle that comes to the family reunion and you have to love him, but at the same time, you don't want to be around him, if that makes sense. So the idea of giving eBay consistent time, that, that lost uncle that you don't want to deal with, it's not very desirable. But just know that um, if you give that uncle that extra time, you might just end up in his will. Now, that's a bad analogy, I know. Wow. But <laughs> eBay is going to give you the love back, okay? So they're going to give you sales. They're going to give you consistency back. And if you're only listing once in a while, well, you're only going to get a once in a while kind of response back from eBay. Now, Guess what? There's a lot of folks out there who wholeheartedly disagree with what I just said. But chances are they've got great product. I'm sure they won't you know, dispute that. Chances are they've got great product. Chances are that there's so many things that we talk about on this channel that you should do to your listings and maybe you should do as a seller that really don't pertain if you're selling great stuff. If you're selling iPhones all day on eBay, man, you can do whatever you want. A lot of these rules don't even apply. A lot of the videos that I make are for the everyday man and woman who is just sitting there trying to make the average stuff they find at yard sales, thrift stores, and even liquidation work. Now, if you think about it, the stuff that we're buying at yard sales, thrift stores, and liquidation are things that somebody didn't want. Your customer return palette, Guess what? They got the item in the mail and they said, you know what? I don't want this item. Something's wrong with it or it just doesn't match something. I'm going to send it back, get my money back. Thrift store. Someone went and just dropped off a big bag of stuff because they didn't want it anymore. A yard sale. People are just trying to clear space or get rid of stuff. They'll sell that item to you for two bucks because they just don't want to see it anymore. It's in their way. Whatever their, their motivation is. But we are dealing, a lot of us are dealing with average stuff in our stores. And I think a lot of us give our stuff too much credit. If you just sit back and look, look at your store for a minute. Go through, browse through your store. A lot of it's just average stuff. And for that reason, we have to compete with other resellers. That's just the bottom line. We're competing with other resellers. And in a lot of cases, you have a lot of competition. So what does that mean? That means that you have to play to the algorithm. And the algorithm wants to see that consistent love. They want to see that good title. They want to see the good photos. They want to see the item description. They want to see a good price. They want to see you if you have a store using coupons and markdown sales. They want to see you do all these things. And if you're not giving eBay what it really wants, why should you expect eBay to give you what you really want? And that's a lot of sales. It's so like a relationship. It is a bad one. But you know, this is what we got. This is the this is the this is the cards that we're dealt. And if you are truly serious about making money on this platform, then to me it's about being serious about your schedule. That's the first thing. I have an alarm set for 8 a.m. and that's later than I really want. But I stay up later because I'm because working. Jenna refuses. To she up. does really refuse. But um, and that's that's another thing. Getting her, getting her to get into a schedule. I'm trying to go to bed early, uh, or you know, like 11 o'clock is like where I'm trying to get to sleep. But I don't get to sleep until around midnight because we got the the TikTok machine in her hand going like crazy, <laughs> and um, it's. It's very, very difficult. Uh, so if you have a significant other that stays up late uh, and you tend to stay up late with them, I can understand that, but you're gonna have to figure something out or come up with a schedule that says, look, I don't work until 10 a.m., 11 a.m. That's when I start my shift and then I'm gonna work until this time and then cut it off at that time. And that's, in my opinion, one way you can go about doing it. And sorry about the tape. She, she knows I'm on a video right now, but she's just being as I'm loud as she work. can. You know, you're in my workspace. So, you know, I'm working too, honey. <laughs> <laughs> so, but uh, yeah, that is, that is my message to you guys. And, and again, we can debate this until the cows come home. 
But from my own experience, and even talking to Archie and other, a couple other resellers I've, I've spoken with on this subject, that they've like taken a couple days off a listing, or maybe they've listed once or twice in a week. They've had good sales and then boom, nothing. Um, their sales have been inconsistent more often than not when they are not consistent when they're listing. And that is why I think, and I was talking to Art last night on the, on the program on the live stream. You know, he's part time and you know what? He makes it work. He does his listings like, like maybe once or twice in a week. But my argument is I think he would be more consistent with his sales if he just listed those items throughout the week and played to Uncle eBay and uh, made him or her happy and uh, just not listed all at once. Um, now, eBay doesn't say that you have to list every day but also by being consistent having a plan and sticking to that schedule and listing every day it puts you into your own process if that makes sense so it's good to have a process so that you stay consistent um, if you are on this eBay vacation where you think I'm not working my nine to five anymore and I can just do whatever I want I promise you if you uh, actually developed a schedule and stuck with it, you're going to see better results on this platform. So that's my message for you guys today. Comment down below. Let me know what you think. Um, while you're at it, if you enjoy the video, please hit that like button. That's really all I ask. Uh, when we do these videos, um, it helps. Hitting that like button helps get the word out to eBay that this is a decent program. If you enjoy the videos though, why don't you hit the subscribe button? Subscribe. I'm trying to build this channel up. Um, I think we're building a really strong community and uh, love to see more like-minded sellers on the lives uh, when we go out and do the lives on Mondays and Fridays. Uh, also, if you want to hit that notification bell, hit that notification bell so that you're going to be notified when I drop a video like this or right before we go live. So developing a schedule, being consistent, pacifying uncle or auntie eBay, I think is something that should be important to all resellers. And it's time that if you want to see success on this platform or any platform for that matter, that you start taking it seriously and developing a schedule and stick to that schedule, whatever it may be, that's up to you. But having a schedule instead of just winging it, is yet another example of how sometimes flipping ain't easy. And I want you to check out this video here uh, for another topic. Hopefully that'll help you. But in the meantime, uh, I want you guys to have an excellent rest of your day and we will talk to you soon. My screen, I'll just talk here in front of the thing while it charges. Hopefully that charges it. Okay, hopefully it charges it. Oh, we're having an earthquake here. It's an earthquake. Wow. What's it doing? I don't know. It does not want you to make this video. This gimbal is on drugs. <laughs> you should keep that in the video. <laughs> <laughs> I'll put it at the end. Sorry, guys. <laughs> See, it doesn't want to follow me. <laughs> Can you follow me? I don't want to follow me, so I have to like get down like like this. Get down. This is dumb. <laughs>